Once upon a time, there was a drag queen, a Viennese drag queen. Let's call her Candylicious. Her story began with a wall similar to the wall that I just destroyed. Why? On June 3rd, I wanted to do a drag queen storytelling. I wanted to read to children in drag out of children books. It was part of Vienna Pride, actually. It was a really small event. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because, on the one hand, I saw videos online of drag queens doing exactly this in the US. They went to schools and they read to children about diversity and about life, about colors. I have a degree in sex education. I'm an activist and I'm a drag queen. So I wanted to combine those things. I told myself I want to give young people the chance to look at me, to feel a drag queen, because to be honest, kids and their parents, they don't go out at night to watch a drag show. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I'll do it. But one week prior to the event, I received the first message of a friend that said, there's a trans propaganda in Vienna, that a dangerous trend from the US is coming to Austria. People called me a pedophile. There were articles telling that drag queens sexualize children. Some were really harmful. Some of them were not so harmful. But each article was a little brick that led up to a wall an actual wall. People that were not good with me doing that, they came to the library at night and they built a wall looking like that. So they went up there at night to build this. Insane, isn't it? I mean, they wanted to stop me, a two meter tall drag queen. <laughs> well, they couldn't. In the morning of the event, the wall was torn down. I could do the reading. It was so good to see more than 20 children in front of me listening to the story of Julian wanting to become a mermaid. It was really moving. But this wall was not the first one I had to break. I'm from a little town in Styria. It's in Austria. <laughs> With not more than 3,000 people living there. I had my outing more than 18 years ago. You can imagine how that went. <laughs> I was called a faggot daily. I was insecure. I didn't feel welcome in the society. I didn't feel normal. So I thought, I'll move to Vienna. Everything will be better. In the beginning, it wasn't, because I was still insecure. My first company, Colleagues asked me, for example, do you have a girlfriend? And I said, nothing, because I didn't want to say I'm gay. I didn't have the courage. But what changed? I engaged in organizations, in more than five organizations, in organizations that help queer people to become who they are, to help them with their outings. My goal was, for young people to not have those walls, to build bridges. And it felt really good to engage in those organizations. So this is the importance of activism. But let's go further back. Maybe you've heard of her. Marsha P. Johnson was the person who threw the first brick at a wall of policemen. Her movement paved the way for prides we are maybe all familiar with. She and other people who were basically not part of society, they changed so much. So they broke a really huge wall because without them, maybe we wouldn't even have prides. On the other hand, there's another activist here in Austria. He's a lawyer, Helmut Graupner. Without him, maybe queer people wouldn't have any rights here in Austria, because to be honest, the politics, they don't do a lot here in Austria. <laughs> it's true.
In 2017, he was the one who represented five children in front of the Institutional Court of Justice because their parents, either two moms or two dads, had illegitimate children. That means they weren't seen as a family. The law said, you're not a family. He wanted to change that. A lot of people wanted to change that. But he was the one who broke the wall that was the law that prevented two men or two women to get married. So without him, two men wouldn't be able to marry here in Austria. So now I spoke only of two activists in the world, only two. But imagine, maybe you have family members or friends, or you just know people who are also queer, LGBTIQ. Without activists, maybe a trans person would not get a legal medical treatment. Intersex people would be invisible. People could not adopt children if they are two men or two women. So it's really important that we had and have those activists, whether it's for queer rights, whether it's for women's rights, whether it's for rights for people of color, because without them, minorities, they would be still be minorities. And unfortunately, the number of activists is decreasing because people think that posting a picture online on social media is enough activism. I'm telling you, unfortunately, it's not. All the organizations that do such great work, they need hands-on activists. The one who go out there on the streets and help them organizing a pride march, organizing other events, fighting in front of courts like Helmut Graupner did. So we need them. I'm not asking you to also become a drag queen like me and be completely activists. I'm asking you to spread the word of love. Tell your neighbor that it's important to not only love each other, but really to respect and accept each other. Tell it to everyone you know tomorrow until it reaches the last person on earth, until it reaches the president of Serbia well, uh, just recently, <laughs> but just recently, Euro Pride was almost cancelled because of right wing conservatives. And until it reaches the president of Iran, where homosexuality is still punished by death. Two women were just killed. <laughs> Two women were recently just killed in Iran because they are lesbians. So it's really important that we engage in society, that we do something. The suicide rate of queer people is four times higher than the suicide rate of non-queer people. I'm asking you to not build walls, build bridges, and rise with me to the rainbow until we can all live happily ever after. Thank you. <laughs>